Hi guys, welcome back to Voice in My Ear, where we journey together in becoming attractive through our speech and stances that we take in life. In the last episode, we discussed the illusions our society has on what a true display of confidence looks like. So it isn't about how you position your hands or your feet or how much space you take up or how well you conform to the current beauty standards uh, that can give you this confidence. No, right? This, it's actually the choice of your words, your thoughts, your ideas, your actions, your values, whatever. All these that make up who you are and that is what makes someone more interesting and more attractive in my opinion. So that is where true confidence can come from. And in this episode, I want to focus inward for a bit and then something strange. So let's forget about how we come across to other people or how to be or how to present ourselves. All I want to do in this episode is focus inward for right now. So if you are like most people, we all have formed some sort of fear or some sort of, uh, you know, um, becoming of conscious of how we present ourselves. Uh, in other in front of other people so let me let me ask you this have you ever been in a setting where you were nervous about what you were going to say okay so think of the settings right now you know in your life what were the thoughts that were going through your mind before these events in these settings I want to try an exercise with you if you're willing. If you want to pause this video and go grab a pen and paper, or even if you want to just do it on your phone, pause this video and type down or jot down all the things that were going through your mind when you were being presented in these, you know, nervous situations and like just your thoughts. Like, why were you nervous? What what was it about the situation? What do you think was going to happen? So let's pause and you can come back when you're ready. Okay, welcome back. So I want you to read out loud to yourself these thoughts that you just wrote down. You can pause again. How was that? How was that experience um, when you read it? I want to give you some examples of what, you know, generally people have come up with, right? Here are some examples. Here are some examples. People might think that I'm unintelligent or not as much of an expert and that I really don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, another one. I'm afraid to look like a joke. I don't want to end up on the internet as the viral meme of the year. I can see that people just laugh at someone and make fun of them here. Mm -hmm. Another one. I have been criticized before in front of other people and people are just going to tear me apart right over here. Okay. I don't like it when people stare at me. It makes me highly uncomfortable. Another one. People in this audience are are way more accomplished and experienced than me. They are going to see right through me that I don't even know anything more than them. Okay. Sometimes I black out in my nervousness. Or maybe it's blank out. Blank out in my nervousness. I'm afraid to forget my points and just have awkward long pauses and people are going to get annoyed and frustrated at how long I'm taking. I'm afraid none of my content is entertaining or funny and I call myself a comedian. They're going to laugh at me, not with me. (laughs) My fear of coming off as boring will come true over and over and it's going to keep hurting my self-esteem. What if somebody tries to argue against me on the points that I'm making? I'm not lying or making these facts up. I just sometimes struggle to put it in the right words. Okay, another one. I'm afraid I'm contrarian or sometimes the only point of view in a group that's different. It's hard to put up or fight against a whole group of people who are on the offense as I'm the only member of my team. It makes me second guess myself. Okay, so... You and I may have something similar, right? Or may not have something similar. In all of these examples that I just listed and even including your own, what pattern do we notice here? 
And it doesn't matter whether your setting was speaking in front of a group of friends or your classmates or you're presenting prepared remarks for a work meeting or even a family gathering, it doesn't matter. In whatever examples that you have, and amongst the one that I just mentioned, what is the pattern that you noticed? And think in terms of where the target location is. Is it grabbing these from the audience's brains or is it grabbing from our own brains about what we think other people are thinking about us? Right. All these examples, uh, and probably even your own, I guarantee, are coming from your own mind and your own projections and your own assumptions. Okay, you may be saying... No, hold up. These are not my projections or assumptions or fears. These are stemming from the fact that I have had these experiences in my past and my audiences did tell me these things and I did experience these things in real life and it was traumatizing. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you a little secret? Most people are self-interested and self-obsessed, meaning they don't have that much time to think about you or how well you performed in front of an audience or where you slipped up or how stupid you look. Most people have moved on from that event and only we remember it, right? It's really not a big deal to anybody else, but chances are they don't even remember it, but we definitely do. And so here's what I'll say about that line of thinking, right? Why do we make people out to be such critics or opponents or adversaries? How do we know that they were thinking that, oh, you you know, this person's horrible, stupid, whatever. How do we know, how do we know that they weren't thinking like, oh, wow, this guy did such a good job on his presentation. This girl is so funny. I wonder where she came up with a joke like that. This kid is so smart. I wish I was as smart as him at my age. I know this guy was stuttering when he was speaking, but this guy is so brave. I wish I had his courage. How do you know that people weren't thinking these things instead? You know, I believe that people are generally good and they want to see you succeed. And those people who don't want to see you succeed, erase them from your thought process. Who cares? And they're a very small number anyway. And even those who are our critics, right, they're not, they don't necessarily not want to see us succeed, maybe some of them, but even our own critics are helping us towards our success, right? They're the ones who are kind of giving us pointers and guiding us in the direction that we either need to correct ourselves or learn how to embrace our weaknesses, right? So humans, I mean, we're designed, we are designed to be social beings. We need feedback from others, right? So critics are good. The thing that we need to keep in mind is that we are also given all the power, complete power, in fact, on deciding how we accept the feedback and how we internalize it, right? If there was malice and there was, you know, something negative about it, don't accept it. But did they have any truth, any truth, an atom's worth of truth in what they were saying, then take that truth and disregard the rest of it or discard the rest of it. Right? So the key takeaway points are don't make people out to be such horrible adversaries. They are rooting for you, actually, and you may not even know it, and you've painted a horrible picture of them. And even if not a single person was rooting for you, you know the best way to get out of your own head and quiet those fearful thoughts that you wrote down? It is to develop a mindset of serving others. Right? It's not about you. It's not about me. We have these fears because we've made it too much about ourselves. We're caring too much about protecting ourselves from ridicule and critique from other people. Right? Instead, if we focus on how we are helpful to others and serve others in whatever capacity, right? either you are a student working towards a future of service or if you are an entrepreneur serving other people with your products that you sell or if you're an employee doing the best work in the service of your community, whatever it is, this is the best way to get out of your own head. Quiet those thoughts and create something worthy in the world, right? All the greatest people that we know, they are infamous because they provided some value to the world, to other people. It wasn't just because it was for themselves. It was because this is what made them remarkable, because they provided some value and how they served others. So do you remember how I said in the beginning that we will first focus inward and then something strange after that? Well, this is something strange. How strange is it if we start to focus on other people and what benefits them? What provides value for them? What could I do to remove their worry? What could I, what could I do to help them, you know, succeed? Like if we are other focused, right? So focus. So in, initially, focusing inward to understand why we feel this way, but then 
that's it. Okay, we, you know, it's everybody feels this way. But now we are focusing outward to other people. And so that's, that's it. That's the way we get out of our own heads. So this is voice in my ear. Being attractive through speech and the stances we take in life. Until next time, focus on serving others. Goodbye.